What's up guys, welcome back to Sentimental Gaming. Today we've got something pretty exciting. I'm gonna be building a VR machine, it's portable. Um, I recently got an Oculus Rift and it's definitely something I've been enjoying, but it's not something that a lot of people have access to. So, uh, I've got a bunch of spare parts. I've got a couple of things I needed to buy, but now it's all here and I wanna build a portable VR machine that's lightweight, but still capable of running the, the hardware that's in the Rift, so. If you're new to VR or PC building in general, make sure you stick around. This video is going to go over a couple different things. I'll, I'll talk about the parts I'm going to use as I use them in the build, um, which you'll you'll start to see here in just a minute. But just wanted to say, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for watching, and um, let me go grab some parts, and we'll get started on this. Alright guys, so real quick rundown on all the parts that I used in this build. It's got a Ryzen 5 1600 CPU, cooled by a Cryorig H7. It's got a spare or second 120mm PWM fan by, uh, by Cryorig, it's the LED 120 PWM. Um, all that is slapped onto an Asus A320M Pro 4 motherboard. It's a decent motherboard for the price. It's got four DIMM slots, which is why I picked it. Uh, it's also got a couple M.2 drive bays and I believe four SATA ports, so it's it's decent. Um, it does have two by 16 slots. Only one of them will run at by 16 if you populate the second slot. The, both of them will run at by eight, but it does have both both slots available to you. Um, it also has two by one ports as well on the board, which is useful, especially since I threw in an extra ASUS Wi-Fi card because Wi-Fi doesn't come stock on this on this board um, from the factory so I added that in there um, I do have 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM I'm, it does, it's kind of irrelevant if you're using a different motherboard or even if you're using my motherboard I wouldn't recommend this RAM I would recommend getting whatever is on the manufacturers memory QVL qualified vendors list on their website which, whatever uh, motherboard you get you can find that on the manufacturers website and pick from there um, I've got a 120 gig SSD by PNY, as well as a one terabyte hard drive just for mass storage. The SSD is my boot drive, and it also gives some of my applications a snappy response time, but the one terabyte is where all my actual storage will go. All of that's being powered by a Corsair CX650M, and I slapped it all in the BitPhoenix Prodigy M case. Just a few things to say about the BitPhoenix case. It is micro ATX and it, it works for my needs, but it's not something that I would recommend to the average PC builder. Uh, unless you're planning on picking up your PC and moving it a bunch, I would not at all encourage you to buy this case. It's, it's a very specific case for a very specific use. Um, the handles I've read in a couple other reviews were a little bit flimsy, but to be honest, that's just untrue. I've got 35 pounds of hardware in this case, and they're not going anywhere. This thing, I mean, it is solid. It does have its downsides, but the handles are not one of them. The downsides that I noticed are a little bit different. One of them is the back panel, which is my, my biggest critique of this case. If you put an SSD in the back panel, and you run your SATA and SATA power cables, and then try to close the case, 
it almost pinches those cables. It is very, very close. Um, depending on the the way your your power supplies, uh, say the power cables are shaped, it may or may not pinch them. And the same goes for whatever uh, say the cables you're using from the motherboard to the the, the solid state drive itself. Um, I'm not a big fan of that. That's probably my biggest critique. The only other downsides that I notice to this case are the facts that the five and a quarter inch bay is not accessible when you use a discrete double slot GPU. You could probably still use it if you had a single slot or if you used an APU. You could definitely uh, uh, take advantage of having that five and a quarter inch bay, but in my use case, I just couldn't. All in all though, I gotta say that the BitPhoenix Prodigy M case is a good case. My, my absolute favorite thing about it is the fact that it's a left hand mounted motherboard and you have two top uh, fan mounts for 120s that you can use as intakes. Those two in combination means that your, your GPU, if you're using a discrete GPU, has two fans all to itself blowing nice, crisp, cool air on them all the time and that is absolutely wonderful it's not something you could get in a lot of cases the other thing that gives this case a step above a lot of other micro atx cases is the fact that it does have a five and a quarter inch drive bay although you can't use it with a double slot uh, discrete gpu if you used an apu or a single slot card you'd be perfectly fine and that does that does put it a step above a lot of cases in, in, in this range Anyway guys, that's all I've got for this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you leave me a like, subscribe, whatever you gotta do to, to show some love and let me know that I'm doing something right. I had a lot of fun with this build and I'd love to do this again. I've got another project coming up here real soon that's a lot along the same lines but a little bit different use case you guys might find interesting. So if you wanna see that, make sure you hit the, that subscribe button and stick around for the next video. But I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it just as much as I enjoyed filming it and editing it and, and getting the benchmarks and everything else. But uh, that, like I said, that's all I got for today. This is Sentimental Gaming signing off and we'll see you all in the next video.